half hour, a caught on tape controversy that started with a traffic violation in Texas, but ended in a major embarrassment for the Dallas Police Department. They have apologized now to the family of the NFL running back who was barred from being at his mother-in-law's side when she passed away. But now a city and a family try to move on. The police dash cam tape shows a car slowly run a red light and pull into the hospital parking lot. Get in there. Excuse Let me see your hand. Tamisha Motes, wife of NFL running back Ryan Motes, gets out first. Her mother is inside the hospital, about to die. Do you understand? But the officer, Robert Powell, will not let Ryan follow her. Do we have a problem? We don't have a problem. My mother-in-law is dying right okay. now. I don't understand why you can't understand. Okay, listen to me. I got seconds before she's gone, man. Listen, if I can't verify you, my, my mother's dying to me. right now. You're wasting my time. If I can't verify you have insurance, I'm going to sell the car. Uh, Shut right. your mouth. There you go. Shut your mouth. You can cooperate and settle down, or I can just take you to jail for running a red light. After 13 minutes, Officer Powell writes him a ticket and lets him go, but it's okay, too late. Moat's mother-in-law, Janetta Collinsworth, is gone, and he never got to say goodbye. I am uh, embarrassed and disappointed by the behavior of Officer Robert Powell. His behavior, in my opinion, did not exhibit the common sense, the discretion, the compassion that we expect our officers to exhibit. And joining us now in a GMA exclusive, their first national television interview, Ryan Motes and his wife, Tamisha. And I know that you all couldn't even look at the video yeah. that was playing right then. First and foremost, our condolences to you Thank and you. your family. Thank I, you. Thank you. I know this happened on March 18th and you were yeah. able to have a wonderful homecoming mm -hmm. yeah. for your mother. How are you doing? You know, I'm making it. It's a tough process. But, you know, together as a family, we have a lot of support. Mm -hmm. We're making it. Well, I, I yeah. can't wait to, to hear more about your mother. And we're yeah. going to talk just 45 years old. We're going to talk more about her in mm -hmm. just a moment. Um, can you take us back, Ryan? You're, you're frantically trying to get to the hospital with your family. You roll through the red, red light. The sirens are going on behind you. You pull into the parking lot at the hospital. Can you tell us what happened then? Well, um, my wife was the first one to exit the car, and um, I really didn't realize um, what was going on at the time. Once I got out, I realized it was pretty serious, and then, you know, I was afraid for her because, you know, he was pointing the gun at her. He had the gun? He had the gun, gun out. Drawn. Drawn. He, he maintains he didn't point it. He said yeah. he did have it out of his holster, but he didn't. He pointed it. He pointed at her. it. Yeah. Um, so my first reaction was just to not react just put my hands on the car and then once he saw me get out he his attention came towards me and then that's when pretty much all the verbal um, abuse and everything that went on yeah tamisha you wanted to get to your mother's side yes and you just got into the hospital as fast as you could yes when you're in a situation like that you really don't think about how dangerous it is because honestly he could have shot me I mean he pointed the gun at me and he basically said you know don't take another step don't move get back over here though like that was kind of like a threat like don't move mm -hmm. basically you know and in my mind I'm thinking or else he'll shoot so um, I was thinking in my mind I'm gonna go in this hospital I will be by my mom's side no matter what so I mean, at that point in time, I was ready. I was ready for whatever he was going to do. Because you, you knew minutes. Yes. Minutes were, were yeah. very precious yeah. at that time. I, is there any way that the officer, did he ever convey to you that he thought that you were emotional, trying to get to the hospital as fast as you could, as safe as you could? You had your hazard lights mm -hmm. on. Did he feel that you may, in your driving, have put other people in harm's way? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know, but I know um, that... I was I got there as safely as I could. Mm -hmm. I um, I flagged down all the traffic. I didn't run through a red light. I stopped at the red light, and I asked for permission of the other drivers to let me go. They saw me with my hazards on, so they let me go. They had grants. They let me go. Um, so I wasn't reckless at all. People from the hospital, nurses, other another uh, officer, pleading with Officer Powell, um, letting him know that the situation was dire did you think also that hey i'm just gonna just gonna walk away and go into the hospital and join my family well when i got out i thought if i explained it to him 
maybe he will understand. Um, so I went to explain it to him, and, you know, I wasn't getting anywhere. So I just say, you know, how about I just be quiet, right. let him say what he has to say, and maybe he'll just go ahead and write the ticket and, and let me go and give me time enough to get up. Um, so he, when he started to talk. Um, and it just kept going and going, and, I'm, and then I just had to say to him, I said, Can, could you just write the ticket and just let me go? Um, I was thinking maybe he could walk up with me mm. and let me say my goodbyes and then write me. I, I didn't have a problem with paying the ticket then about the, the red light, but, you know, I thought he would have some type of sympathy. Well, police commanders who have viewed the tape have committed you, said you never tried to say you're an NFL player, never were looking for special treatment, you just wanted to get to the side. Yeah. of your mother-in-law and officer powell three years on the force mm -hmm. he has issued a statement as well and he said he wished to uh, publicly and sincerely apologize to the Mo motes family after stopping mr motes vehicle i showed poor judgment and insensitivity to mr motes and his family by my words and actions he said also that he was trying to reach out to the family and hasn't been able to get in touch with you mm -hmm. um would you like to talk with him what would you want to say to him first of all uh, i accept his apology and, and i hope it's sincere um, a sincere apology so uh, you know I've kind of left it up to my wife because you know I love Joe jo, you know my mother-in-law yes. we, we call her Joe and, <laughs> yeah, and you know I, you know she was just like my mom basically and 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 so I wanted to leave that up to her if she wanted to to, to hear that from him person yeah. yeah. actually um, it would be comforting if we you know heard a apology directly from him but up until this point we have not received a personal call from him directly um, but you know maybe he's tried to reach out and we just perhaps missed his call but we definitely would accept his apology because you know he's a human being so we would definitely well, accept it. Well let's talk about Jo. Just 45 years old. She was a teacher. Yes. Loved and, and beloved. You tell yes. us about her. Well um, my mom she was a um, Head Start teacher and um, just a family person. Two things that just describe her would be, uh, one, she loved her kids and she loved her family. And uh, just a story that will kind of make you know what kind of a person that she was. Once she took her entire bonus from work to buy Christmas presents for all of her kids because she loved the holidays and she believed that all kids should have Christmases and, you know, and she wanted each kid to have at least two gifts to open on Christmas morning. So, you know, that's just kind of the person that she Very was. She good. was always looking out for other people before herself. And she was looking out for people. We should say she died breast cancer. We can see your ribbon yeah. that you proudly yeah. are wearing. And she was very proactive. She yeah. was letting people know about early detection. Yes. And that. She was a member of a um, breast cancer support group um, in our area where I'm from. Um, she, this was her second time with mm -hmm. cancer. Originally, she was diagnosed in 2006. Um, this last time, it came really fast, came back really fast. Um, early detection is very important. It's important for people to get screened and just stay on top of their, you know, their records and get second, third opinions just because um, it, can, it can spread really quickly. And that's what happened to her. Well, Tanisha, I know how proud she was of you. Thank and you. she did think of you as a son. You mm -hmm. are a son to her, Ryan. So thank you both very much. And we should say that you all did not make this public, that uh, it was broken by uh, our ABC affiliate, WFAA, Rebecca Lopez, saw this tape. Yes. And that all you wanted was a, was going to file a, a written complaint. Yes. That was all that was to it. Yes. So, but thank you so much. Thank you for coming forward. And we wish thank you, you much. Thanks. Time now for the weather, Sam.